Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of uh, the Sleeping Bee Podcast. Today, um, I'm going to be over here at La Cueva uh, Trail of the Dripping Springs National Monument, or at the Dripping Springs Park and the Oregon National Monument. Um, it's at the foot of the Oregon Mountains, and um, La Cueva just translates to the cave in Spanish. So basically, this is a huge, uh, a hugely important uh, archaeological site where over 100,000 artifacts were found um, by the University of Texas in El Paso, or to the locals is known as UTEP, over in, um, or ba- back in the 1970s. And in the 1860s, there was actually a rock shelter here that is um, that was home to this dude that ended up being known as the Hermit. So, uh, you know, maybe we'll find that cave and maybe we can check it out and... Uh, see how that dude was living or whatever but it's a pretty dope little site it's um very important uh archaeological site like i said and so we can't like let's see if we can't find some shit and then um we got some uh, monsoonal rains that hopefully don't get us uh there's supposed to be a big ass storm uh coming through or at least you know some flash flooding and stuff because there's a monsoon like monsoonal rains that are going to connect with like another system so you know um the site was also known um back in from 5000 bc to just uh recently after the europeans you know colonized america or whatever so um it's very important for archaeological um findings like i said like two times already so but uh, I want to show you the Oregon Mountains real quick and the fog that's uh, draping over the over the mountains. It's just so fucking mystifying. So one sec. Look at that shit. Isn't that so dope? Can you imagine just being on top of that? The Oregon Needle up there is um, about 9,000 feet in elevation, and we're about 5,000 feet down here at the you know at the land level. So you gain 4,000 feet in elevation when you do the needle hike. It's uh pretty intense shit but sorry i just showed you like all this random ass shit in my car i thought i was focusing on myself but i guess it's still face the other way anyway technology still sucks but uh nature's still cool so stay tuned luck wave a dripping springs trail so from the jump we see this uh huge intermingling of um laria tridentata which is the uh, creosote bush here um, and we also have more non-focusing shit, but, um, also this Roos, uh, Microphylla, which is the, um, Little Leaf Sumac. God damn, dude, I just want this shit to focus. What the fuck? Whatever, it's not focusing. It's being a bitch. But you get it. You've seen it a million times in this Prosopis glandulosa, which is the honey mesquite. Um... The pods are edible of the honey mesquite, the, and then you'll have the, you know, two, two spines per. God, why is this shit not focusing? Kind of annoying. But anyway, you get the two spines per, uh, per node, and that's one of the distinguishing factors. And then you have this bipinnately compound leaf structure. Uh, the pods are edible. Tastes like honey. The, they're uh, in the Fabaceae family, so they fix nitrogen. The cows will um, eat them as well because they're very high in nitrogen, which is a precursor to protein development. So uh, very good for uh, for cows and other grazing type of animals. So basically, the uh, La Cueva Trail trailhead splits into two different trails you have the arroyo trail uh you walk it a little bit and then you go to the left and you find the arroyo trail or you can keep going straight or kind of you know to the right and then you have the la cueva trail so again uh, we're going to do the arroyo trail first we're going to see what we can find and if we have time uh, go to the la cueva trail and see what's going on with that shit so let's find out 
So right here we have what is called the netleaf hackberry. This is a Celtis reticulata. Um, there are two main hackberries that I know of anyways in, um, in North America. You have the Celtis reticulata, uh, which is the netleaf hackberry, and then you have the Celtis um, occidentalis, which is the common hackberry. The occidentalis doesn't really occur um, this far west. Um, it'll, it'll occur a little bit further, but... And then let's see if we can see... So here, this is very sandpapery leaves. Um, I'm trying to focus on this shit. It might be kind of hard to tell, but I'm trying to focus on it. If not, we'll have to figure something out. Because you really gotta, gotta see it. Hold on. There we fucking go. Like I said, technology still sucks. I'm still trying to figure this shit out, but I just figured out how to get my stupid fucking phone to focus. But anyway, these are um, nipple. These are what are called nipple galls, and they're commonly found on the um, on the hackberries on the Celtis. And this is actually in the Cannabaceae family. So they have these edible berries. They call them hackberries because they'll actually make you kind of hack. They're kind of gnarly. But uh, the birds like them. They're really good for the birds. And then check that out. We might actually have found. So these uh, those little galls are caused by psyllids. Okay, a little insect called psyllid. They'll feed on the sap and then the, the leaf will uh, cause this little encasing around them that will protect them from predators. So that's kind of cool because insects have found a way to manipulate plants into defending them, which is kind of crazy. But look, check this out. We might have found... I'm not sure. Let's see. One of the fucking focusing issues. There we go. We got some motherfuckers just screaming up there for some reason. But anyways, check that out. I don't know if that's a... Uh, egg sack of a cylinder if that's something else not sure but anyway this uh this tree is actually related to cannabis it is in the cannabaceae family um along with hops which is a uh, humulus in the genus humulus and of course cannabis which is in the genus um cannabis <laughs> so and then the green is what the berries look like when they're immature and then you have the mature berries that are red but again um if you're going to eat them, I don't know, I just, I wouldn't suggest it because they're good for birds, but they can really, I'm pretty sure they're edible for humans, but they're not palatable, you know? Look, we've got some lichens growing on there too. It's pretty cool. Anyways, so check this out. we got another one of these, um, this is actually a cat claw acacia. This is a acacia gregii or synalgia gregii, I guess now. Um, but check it out. we got, ah. Uh, it flew away. Never mind. There was a uh, there was a butterfly on there, and I was going to show you the hind wings of a butterfly um, are what appear to look like giant pupils, like giant eyes, because it it scares off the predators. Oh, look at that lizard right there. Pretty dope. But it'll scare off the um, it'll scare off a lot of the predators because they'll show their hind wings. The wings will look like eyes, and the predators will get freaked out because they'll be like, well, what the fuck is going on? But just missed it, so it's all good. Maybe we'll get another one. Look at the fucking resilience of this oak. Look at that shit. God damn. How old do you think this motherfucker is? You got the little catkin formations here. Maybe. Shit only focuses when it wants to. Kind of annoying. Super annoying. I don't know if I'm even going to post this episode because of how fucking annoying the camera's being. But just in case I do, fucking microphone got stuck too. But check out these galls. Normally the galls on oaks are caused by wasps, which will do the same thing. They'll just um, be encased. So... It'll allow the plant to proliferate around it, so that way the, you know, there's there's less chance of them getting attacked by predators. But this whole thing is just one fucking tree. See, this is where it's stemming from. 
Look at this shit. Isn't that fucking crazy? The resilience of Oaks Man Quercus species. This might be Quercus grizzia, I'm not sure. Again, they like to uh um they like to breed. They like to interbreed. So there's a lot of God, and there's a lot of insect activity going on here. You have a look at that tarantula hawk wasp there. You got a butterfly there. You got a fucking butterfly up there. Um, another butterfly. Let's see if we can't catch those hind wings that I was telling you about. Where'd it go? God, look at all that shit. Look at all those bugs, man. That's fucking crazy. This is a haven for insects right now. But uh, like I said, Quercus grizzia, possibly. I'm not sure, but it's got this nice brand new um brand new growth going on here again maybe so fucking focus shit bugs me there it is look at that formation of the acorn there shit's fucking crazy man but there's so much uh diversity happening and you can't see it unless you get close and you really look. Oh, yeah, you don't want to fuck with that thing. Those things suck. Those things hurt. If they stab you. And then here's some uh, more Roost Microphylla. Um, sumac. The little leaf sumac. Very, very hairy fruits. But uh, very bright and attractive to birds for sure. So... That's why the fruits are so bright and red because it's basically just like calling the birds like, hey, come eat me, spread my seed, you know, uh, disperse my lineage, keep my keep my line going. But god damn, dude, I, I can't get over this fucking oak. This thing has to be hundreds of years old. Look at that shit. That is fucking crazy. You wouldn't think you'd find like trees down here, um, but you can find, you know, small shrubs to you know small or large shrubs to small to medium sized trees so uh, is those sporalsia that might be some sporalsia growing there but I'm not sure anyway here's um another roost but this is a uh, roost trilobata the roost um they call it the skunk sumac because it kind of like stinks i guess but um it's very pungent but that's also a, um, they also call it the lemonade sumac because this is the one where you want to take the berries to make lemonades. This one is not showing any berries, but I mean, besides the fact that it's trilobata, tri meaning three and lobata meaning three lobed or three leaves. So, um, you have the three leaves here, but, um, let's see again. Oh, look at that. Jason's figuring out how to use stupid fucking technology. Isn't that crazy? I can't complain too much because I used to have a flip phone. Well, I guess I still have a flip phone, but. Uh, I used to try to take pictures with the flip phone and uh, shit got like super fucking pixelated. But uh, beyond that, you know, that's a very nice fucking day outside. Only 75 degrees out because of the monsoonal rains and more blurry shit. There you go. There it is. Look at that. Oh, God. What a gorgeous fucking day. But anyways, you can tell that this is a uh, three-leaf sumac, not only based off of the three leaves, obviously, that it has. But look at that. Very, very pubescent. Um new growth you can uh there's, there's there's a clear difference between the new growth and the old growth the old growth is all brown and woody you know obviously um still minorly pubescent though but uh the new growth is very green um and uh very very pubescent compared to the old growth check this out this might be some kind of milkweed species uh asclepias um one of the milkweeds, I'm not sure. Kind of hard to tell. But if we break it open and it's got this like milky sap, yeah, you see that? That's got, uh, that's got Asclepias written all over it. Some kind of milkweed, I'm just not sure what kind, but you can see it's vining. Vining milkweed is just starting here and just taking over the fucking um vining all over the plant but like i said you can the, the the sap is toxic so um whenever i broke it open i tried not to touch it with my hands because it is actually toxic 
but um it just causes like you know dermatitis and like issues and stuff it's not really like bad but don't eat that shit don't put that shit in your mouth but yeah some kind of asclepias species and what's kind of crazy about these uh asclepias that's gotta be an asclepias yeah look at that but uh you can see the nice little geometric patterns of my uh fingerprints too which is kind of cool but anyway um this is what that's what makes you an individual i guess your own person your own individual fingerprints but anyways um the asclepia species are kind of crazy because they have these little uh they're very sticky pollen and they have uh these little areas where insects will like th there are these little slits and the, the insects will put their legs into these slits and a lot of times they'll have to like rip their own legs out just to get out of these slits it's kind of wild and here's a nice little combination of plants we got the oak here the quercus possibly grizzia little leaf sumac here the rusa microphylla and then whatever the fuck this is oh this is more I actually don't know what this is no flowers so it's kind of hard to tell um, pro tip if you want to identify stuff flowers are really what you want to look for leaves sometimes you can kind of tell like oak leaves are pretty distinguishable although they can be polymorphic but um just meaning that there's more than one shape one more than one morphology but it's the flowers that you really want to be able to narrow it down to the uh the family and the order and it's just easier to tell species um based off of a flower more so than the leaves but anyways so this is about as tall as those celtis reticulata trees are gonna be um that you find down here in the wild um and especially in the very lowlands you're not really going to see trees like super duper tall until you start getting up into the you know um 7,000 foot 8,000 foot maybe even 6,000 foot tree line but then you got these big ass oaks these oaks just are fucking massive um and like i said they have to be hundreds of years old just based off of how fucking big they are and how much growth that they have and um i'm i don't think oaks are slow growing trees i mean i'll have to double check on that but i'm not entirely i don't think that they're slow growing so um for these to be this big they just have to be so fucking old it's crazy so check this out this is something i learned about this plant this is called the white thorn acacia this is the uh acacia constricta and i found one the other day so you can see that it has these paired thorns per node but it turns out it's just the younger branches that do um when i was over there fossil hunting in the robledos the other day i found one of these and i was like man this is a white thorn acacia but there's no thorns on it. What the fuck? And I thought it might have been uh, Lucena rotusa, which is little leaf Lucena, but the the leaves are way bigger the um, in the on the Lucena rotusa, and the flowers are a lot bigger as well. Although uh, you know it's called the golden golden lead ball tree or some shit like that. The common name. I don't do well with common names, but anyway, they they have these pom pom like looking um, looking flowers on the Lucena rotusa. But there's no thorns. And then I looked it up because I was like, well, what the fuck is going on here? But it turns out that uh, these acacias, these acacia constricta, which is now, uh, it's not synalgia, it's another, uh, starts with a V, the genus starts with a V, I don't fucking remember. But anyway, um, Vicella or some shit. But anyways, um, it turns out that it's just the younger ones that have the thorns and the older ones don't. And I'm assuming... Um, that just has to do with protection like the younger branches need to be protected more than the older more established branches as far as a purpose or evolutionary adaptation that's all i could think of but i mean i'm not entirely sure the article didn't say but also check this out um this right here is juniperus uh, scopulorum or is it 
I believe this is, yeah, this has to be. This is jun Juniper Scopularum. This is um, the Rocky Mountain Juniper. So it has these, uh, let's see. Focus, bitch. Ah, god damn it. I gotta show you, but it's not letting me. Ah, there it is. Okay, so it's got these uh, bluish-green foliage, Juniper scopulorum, just in case you forgot while it's fucking with the camera. Uh, Juniper scopulorum is the Rocky Mountain Juniper. It's got this greenish-grayish foliage to it, and it's got these um, yellow resin gland dots on the top of them as well. Um, and actually, you can see like kind of white resin gland dots throughout the entire leaf structure as well so um again this is in the cupressaceae uh, family which is a uh, the cypress family it's got this like reddish bark um and it's also uh exfoliating you can see the little shit is coming off um i identified by its bluish green foliage um and it's also got the scale like uh needles um when mature as do all the other junipers, or at least most of them, in the juniperus genus. So, Juniper scopularum, um, Rocky Mountain juniper in the Cupressaceae family, or the Cypress family. So, there's a nice little stand of a Celtis reticulata. And a bee? Where was it a bee? I don't know where it went. Thought it was a fly, I was about to swat it away, but. And I looked down and it was a bee. So fuck yeah. But anyway, um, one of the things I forgot to mention about the Celsus reticulata, um, besides the sandpapery leaves and the uh, nipple gall that make it easy to identify, another easy identification feature is this very warty bark you see here. Where you at? Oh, damn it. He kept... Bee keeps flying away. I keep trying to get him on camera, but he keeps flying away. Which is weird because I'm wearing black, so... Uh, B shouldn't really be attracted to it, but for some reason keeps landing on me, but I welcome it. Fuck it. Why not? As long as it's not a girl, it doesn't sting me because they'll get the worst of it, and I'll really feel bad if their stinger rips out their entire, you know, internal system. But either way, a cool little stand of uh, Celtus reticulata. Look at that. Check this out. Found me a little... Puffball, mushroom. This is an indent from my thumb because I didn't know what the fuck it was. Honestly, I thought it was a, an egg. Oh shit, that scared me. Butterfly literally just landed on my fucking hand and I scared it away. What an idiot. For me, not for the butterfly. Damn, that never happens. And I scared it away. God damn it. But anyway, I thought this was an egg, so I touched it. And uh, it left this little indent. So I guess if I were to like, really press the shit out of it, I could have dispersed its spores. But I just wanted to show you. Look, there's another one. See that? Boom. Must be because all the rains that we've been getting. All the uh, There's another one deep in there. You might, you might not be able to see. And I can't really get in there um, because this fucking acacia is in the way. But... Um, a lot of these mushrooms are really, they're not going to pop up, you know, unless there's a rain. And look here, even when you see this shit on the ground, you can tell that it's a net leaf hackberry because of those nipple galls on it. And the focusing of my phone just gets, you think you figure this shit out? And it turns out that you're still an idiot. Uh, isn't that fucking crazy? Whatever, fuck it. You get the idea. Most of this video is just going to be me fucking around with uh, 
the focus mechanism, which I haven't had a problem with before, but every time I solve one problem, another problem comes up. So, as is life. Uh, you know, Murphy's Law, whatever can go wrong will go wrong, or whatever. Fucking Murphy. Bastard. Let's just take a moment to appreciate how nice of a day this is. So here's some Florenzia. I don't remember the um uh, I don't remember the specific epithet. Um, I don't remember the whole species name, but it's definitely Florenzia, um also known as Tarbush. I don't know how much this I don't know much about it honestly. I don't know if they call it Tarbush because it has really black, you know, bark or really, but um, the thing that I can't say about this is besides the cactus growing inside the creosote, there's a lot of tar bush growing inside the creosote as well, so I don't really know if there's some kind of symbiosis there, what the fuck, but I'll, I'll research it more and find out so I can bring y'all some more uh, information. Here's a fish hook barrel cactus I showed you in the one of the episodes, possibly the Memorial Day one, I'm not sure, but it's... Um, Feral cactus with lazenii generally points to the southwest. Just has this twisted gnarled trunk, I think. The largest one they found uh, growing in the wild was six feet tall over in El Paso, Texas, in the uh, in the Franklin Mountains. So it's got these cool yellow flowers, uh, followed by this pineapple-looking fruit that you can eat. Kind of tastes a little lemonadey. Um, when you get the seeds in your mouth, it's kind of like getting a mouthful of gravel, but just spit that shit out, you know, whatever. Swallow them, doesn't matter. Whatever, spit or swallow, your choice. Well, there it is. The cave at La Cueva. Um, this is where El Hermito, or however you say it in Spanish, this is where the hermit lived, um, I believe what I said, in the 1860s. But, uh, yeah, this area was known since 5000 BC up until the was occupied 5,000 BC until the uh, Europeans colonized America. So, some fucking history right here. Uh, people think New Mexico kind of sucks, but maybe politically speaking, it sucks. And, you know, we're last in education and child well being, and <laughs> obviously that kind of shit sucks. But it's such a beautiful state, so diverse, um, going through like four or five different hardiness zones. Plus, um, there's just such a history here. I mean, Billy the Kid, uh, this, I believe, um, was the Mogollon people. Um, I don't know, we're going to check out a couple of these signs and see, uh, see what's up. But still, this is a pretty dope fucking cave. All the time that I've lived here, and I've never been to this fucking cave. So as you can see, when you get in the cave, you see all these black marks. That's all the it's all the soot and shit like that from when people would have fires back here, um, especially people that you know dwelled in this in this type of cave. So really fucking cool, really fucking cool. The man, the myth, the legend, the hermit. So the legend goes that the the guy known as the hermit, um, when he lived in that cave. He would uh, light a fire in front of the cave every single night. And then, you know, he said, you know, if you don't see the fire, then I've died. And sure enough, one day there was no fire lit. And uh, turns out he'd been murdered and nobody knows who murdered him. They don't know if it was, uh, you know, the Native American peoples. They don't know who the fuck murdered him. But at one at some point he was murdered, um, and they only found that out because there was no fire lit in front of the cave. So, a pretty cool little piece of history that um, I never really knew about. So, again, that's a kind of the cool thing about starting this podcast is uh, forcing myself to go into nature and learn all this history and shit that I wouldn't have probably done. I mean, I would have hiked and stuff, but I wouldn't have looked too much into the history, most likely about it. 
Um, but I want to bring some good content and shit for you guys. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy uh, this episode. I'm going to sneak over to... Um, so I was wrong, actually. So it, it actually splits off. The trailhead splits off a couple ways. So there's the La Cueva trailhead, and then you can take to the left of Royal Canyon. But if you keep going straight where I told you, um, it'll split off again. You can either take Fillmore Canyon or you can take the La Cueva Trail. And the La Cueva Trail is where the cave is located. Uh, Fillmore Canyon is just another canyon. But there should be some Indian paintbrush grown over there, some uh, Castaleja Integra. Um, so I'm going to sneak over to Fillmore real quick and see if I can't find some of that Indian paintbrush. So stay tuned. Here's your Juniperus Depiana, um, alligator juniper, most notably, uh, you can tell based off of the alligator scale-like bark. Some of these, um, have been dated to up to 750 years old out here in the Oregon mountains, which is kind of fucking crazy if you ask me, but it's still pretty goddamn cool. All right, here's some mistletoe for you. Um, I don't remember the scientific name for it, but check it out. This is what it does. Um, it has very sticky seeds, so the birds will eat the seeds, they'll shit them out, you know, they'll uh, drop off on the leaves or whatever, and they'll send in their... They're called, there's hemiparasites and holoparasites. These are called hemiparasites because they still have the ability to photosynthesize. Um, but they're still removing um, nutrients and water from the plant's vascular system. So it has these like weird looking little like yellow flowers. Um, and uh, it'll send, the, like after the seed um, drops off on the, um, on the stem, it'll germinate and it'll send what's called a hostoria, which is basically just the roots of this parasitic plant, um, into the vascular system of the plant, effectively stealing water and nutrients from it. You'll see these all over the place on ash trees, uh, Fraxinus uh, species, and also cottonwoods, which are uh, populous species. So they're de they're obligate. They're known as obligate parasites. So unless there's a shitload of them. Um, they're not going to kill the tree because they need the tree, obviously, because that's how they're deriving all their nutrients and shit. But they can make the tree really weak. When the tree's really weak, then it gets um, it's more susceptible to insect and pest damage um, and disease and stuff like that. So the obligate parasites, unless there's a shitload of them, aren't really going to kill the tree. They can also be like super heavy um, if there's a bunch. So, you know, it can cause uh, damage by like breaking uh, some of the branches and stuff. So just not good. If you ever see this shit, uh, try to eradicate it. For some reason, people will cut this shit off and hang it above, um, you know, doorway or some shit in the middle of, uh, uh, you know, Christmas and they'll use it for some, I don't really know the, the history behind that, but they'll, uh, you're under the mistletoe, you kiss each other or whatever. That's the same thing. This is the same type of plant. Um, that that's used for mistletoe. So I forgot to mention, there's also dwarf mistletoe, um, but that one's really going to occur on the conifers, you know, your junipers and stuff like that. They actually closed down uh, the trestle trail uh, before the whole fucking state was on fire, but they shut it down for a while um, before that, so they could actually eradicate or try to eradicate the uh, dwarf mistletoe. Um, in the area because it, it got so bad but the one we just saw was on an oak tree so um you know it uh it wasn't the dwarf mistletoe type but again i just forgot the the name the uh the species name of it but basically i guess it doesn't really matter because uh you know how it works that's the important part and you know what it looks like so if you see it on your tree um, kill it. So here's a cool little plant called the resurrection fern. I, um, don't know the scientific name for this one, but you can see it everywhere. Um, it's everywhere over there. You can just see it matted up everywhere, but basically they call it a resurrection fern because it can go so long without water to the point where like it's pretty much dead. Um, 
and then a little bit of rain will come in and it'll pop back to life so if you look at the when you look at it, if we can find another one oh, look at this bad boy right here that's fucking dope too um but yeah uh if you look at it a lot of it will be like brown and gray and appear dead but um the clumps that have been able to uptake the moisture are the ones that are going to be green well i unfortunately wasn't able to find any of the uh whole leaf indian paintbrush um it's a super cool plant and a partial root parasite and it's got these like red they, at first they would look like flowers um but they're actually bracts which are modified leaves and then the flower is just like a green tube um, that just comes up out of those bracts but again unfortunately i wasn't able to find it so um it, that is going to actually wrap up this episode so uh i hope you enjoy if you can get out to the arroyo trail um starting the la cueva trailhead then you know the first segment of this video you'll be able to know what plants you're looking at and then if you're actually able to hit the la cueva trail you'll be able to find the cave uh, where the infamous hermit used to live um, in the 1800s so uh, again i hope you guys enjoyed this episode um, let me know uh, like I say always, let me know if you want to be on the podcast. I got, I'm booked for a little while, but uh, can uh, you know fit you in whenever really. We got all the time in the world, so um, uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Um, you know, enjoy nature, get out there, especially on a beautiful fucking day like this, and uh, just go exploring. You know, get off your couch, quit watching TV, quit playing video games, get out there and explore the natural world, whether you know about it or not there's never a better time to learn about it than right now you know what i mean so um yeah again uh, this is going to do it for this episode and uh we'll be back hopefully i have another guest coming on uh this upcoming weekend but uh we'll see how that works out and we're squeezing i'm squeezing people in as i can so uh other than that i'll be bringing you more quality content hopefully um with uh with some of these nature trails so uh yeah go explore that cave learn a little bit about new mexico history and uh some of the vegetation out here so like and subscribe and um i gotta get out of here but uh i'll, I'll catch y'all later peace thanks for watching oh and also real quick um before i forget i wanted to say a uh, late happy father's day to all the great dads that i know um you know that are still with us or you know, may not be with us anymore. Happy Father's Day to all you guys. Um, today's the first day of the solstice, the the summer solstice, so happy solstice. Um, it's also Go Skateboarding Day, so happy Go Skateboarding Day. And it is also, I believe, officially a monsoon season. Uh, that's why we're getting some of these monsoonal rains and stuff. So happy monsoon season as well. Um, it might be National Make Music Day. It was at least a couple years ago. Um, so if it's that, then happy Make Music Day. And if it's not, then make some fucking music anyway, you know, share your creativity with the world. All right. Anyways, uh, peace out y'all. Thank you.